This hotel is a very specific flavor, which isn't necessarily for me, but I can surely see how it would be the perfect fit for many others. We're gonna have a full tour today, so let's get into it. Welcome to Seminyak. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I think that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days. So I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well. All without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and self-fund my trips to be sure I get a true experience. Then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. Seminyak is a bustling town on the southwest coast of Bali, just on the north side of Kuta. To say there's a lot to do in and around this area would be quite the understatement, and I'd say that's how this hotel Indigo fits well into this neighborhood. For better or for worse, this hotel is meant to be a home base, or in some cases, a recovery pad for late nights out. But please, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you won't find all of the comforts and luxuries that you'd need while you're here, but if you're looking for a resort to come to and essentially just not leave for a week, this probably isn't it. Opened in June of 2017, this 289 room property was designed by the famed P49 Architects and is meant to evoke the old school Seminyak lifestyle in its design. Tchotchke. It's a word that I've used for as long as I can remember, but I never knew how to spell it until I needed to write it in today's script. Why? Well, this is Tchotchke Paradise. It's like the lobby is a Tchotchke magnet, attracting everything on the island that is remotely Balinese, or retro, or just pocket-sized, or all three. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I've got a new playlist linked above and below, which has around 15 or so videos, which will just give you a pretty good idea of what this channel is all about. Feel free to take a look and binge for a while. Over here to the side is the reception area, and let me just point out this beautiful carved table. This table is why I actually wish there was less stuff everywhere. The maximalist design here means that it's very easy to just overlook beautiful details like that table, but to each their own. Upon arrival, you'll be served a peaberry lemongrass drink and given a cool towel as you wait for check-in. The other intricate wood carvings that you'll find around the hotel, for example, hanging from the ceiling, are meant to be a creative interpretation of the traditional Balinese weaving textile called Tenun Songket. Then we have the large brass hanging lamps, which are all inspired by the top fixtures of Balinese festive umbrellas. Each little bit and bob has its own story and its own purpose and its own inspiration. This lobby, I assure you, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. That said, I do like the open nature of it, leading the eye straight from the arrival pavilion out to the Seminyak beach. Before we head down one level to take a look at the resort itself, let's check out where we are. Bali is Indonesia's tourist hotspot, and I can confirm with all of my fingers and toes that Bali is fully back to its old pre-COVID self. To those that are used to staying in Jimbaran or Nusa Dua, Seminyak is quite a bit further north, but we're still firmly in the south of the island. Seminyak and its beach buddies Kangu to the north and Kuta to the south form one of the longest stretches of tourist facilities on the island. Here at the resort itself, the footprint is actually pretty small. 
They built the main structure in the shape of an X to maximize the usable area, and let me tell you, they certainly did use every square inch of space here, which is why I mentioned that it's more of a home base resort. Heading downstairs now, we're going to head to the Pottery Cafe, which serves sandwiches and coffee throughout the day and serves as an extension of the breakfast restaurant during peak hours. Heading out from the main core of the resort, there are three other distinct areas, each which is centered around a pool. First up, we're heading to the Secret Garden Pool. If you support the content that I've been putting out on the channel, or if you really love sponsored content and you're lost right now, either way, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Those are the two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video is worth your time. For anyone interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much for watching today. I do have to give them a lot of credit with this one. The layout is truly unique, and even when it's busy, you're still going to feel like you have your own little private corner. To better understand where we are, feel free to pause and take a look at the resort map, which was very helpful. That map, by the way, came with a guide to the area, which I thought was very thoughtful and something that frankly every hotel should be putting together. Now, let's head to the primary pool area. Just in front of us, we have the yoga lawn with some spa treatment caves of sorts to the left. The first pool that we come to is the kids pool, and I would just encourage you to observe how many lounge chairs there are in general around these pools. It might seem like a lot, but let's just remember, their max capacity is over 600 guests. On the left up here, we have the cave pool lounge, which serves up lunch and snacks throughout the day. And here we have the largest of the four pools. Just in front of us is an additional lounge space, and then in front of that is the beach itself. This may be the first time that you, like I, realize that the resort isn't actually beachfront per se, but is separated by the beach walk. Before we explore more though, let's go ahead to my room. On our way, let's speak a little bit about who's staying here. It is a much younger crowd, but there are certainly plenty of families as well. For me personally, there are two reasons why I would come to a hotel like this. First would be if I lived in the area, Jakarta perhaps, and I had many opportunities to hop over to Bali for a weekend to go out with friends. Second scenario would be if I had an extended trip in Bali 
and I wanted to split that time between one resort for true relaxation and then one for going out and about. My thought is always, let's say I have a 10 night budget of $300 a night for accommodation. I would rather have five nights in a $200 property and five nights in a $400 property. For my stay, I had a bog standard king room with a less than stellar view. Note though, I always get comments like, well, if you wanted a better view, you should have booked a better view. Okay, well, I, I'm not complaining about the view. I know what I booked. I'm just pointing it out. The rooms are comfortable, but no surprise, there's just a lot of stuff going on in here. I do appreciate the long desk, but I wish it was a bit deeper. My laptop, which is not a large laptop, could barely be open without it hanging off the edge. There was plenty of connectivity throughout the room though, both electrical ports and USB ports. A note about Wi-Fi, and this applies to all of my hotel videos. When I don't talk about Wi-Fi, that means it was fine. Connecting wasn't a pain, it stays connected throughout, and you can easily stream to your heart's content. If and when the Wi-Fi is poor, or is somehow exceptionally good, then I'll mention it specifically in the video. The mini bar was a bit chaotic, but stocked well enough. I am really curious though, what percentage of guests actually use an orange press when they go on vacation? The closet is to the side of the entryway and is a good size. Plenty of hanging space as well as open space for baggage and a very, very well lit vanity to the side. Last up, we have the bathroom with an oversized single vanity in the middle flanked on the left by a massive shower, which even had balcony access for some odd reason. And I do have to say, the towels were surprisingly luxurious for an indigo. If this makes sense, I believe the soaps were a branded version of generic products, which were in non-tamper-proof bulk containers. Finally, on the other side, we have the separate toilet room.
Let's go check out the balcony. I will say, it's nice that newer IHG and Hyatt properties are really going all out with their balconies. It's nice to see them a little bit larger and just not so cookie cutter like they were in the past. And hey, if you look closely enough, it's an ocean view after all. The only actual issue that I had with the room was an AC unit that leaked a lot, even after being fixed. And clearly it's been an ongoing issue for quite some time as the floor in this area, which I do applaud them for using real wood, is damaged. Okay, now we're heading to the hotel's beach club, Sugar Sand. While it is attached to the hotel, you need to exit the fence and you'll need your keycard to get back into the resort facilities, as the beach club is also open to the public. In the basement, there are very nice changing and showering facilities, and then upstairs there's a pool with a restaurant and bar surrounding it. We're going to come back here in a bit for dinner, but first, let's finally go check out that beach. The beach here is absolutely massive. Like seriously, one of the deepest beaches I've ever seen on the island. White sand, as the hotel advertises, it is not, but it is spotlessly clean with lots of restaurants and beach clubs in all directions. This is how you'd exit the hotel to the beach had you not walked through the beach club itself. And as you'd expect, this beach makes a fantastic spot for some beautiful sunsets. Of course, I finally decided to head to dinner and then, then it decided to become really beautiful. Anyway, the vibe here at night is really chill and inviting. Here's the full lunch and dinner menu. I had a calamari starter and a baby chicken main dish. It was actually called baby chicken on the menu, and man, they were not kidding. There were a good six bites on that bird. No worries though, if you were still peckish, you could head over to the tree bar. This is the resort's primary bar at night, but just like the Pottery Cafe, in the mornings it also serves as an extension of the breakfast restaurant. The tree bar, named after this tree, which is the same one that peeks up through the lobby above.
All right, before we head to breakfast, let's check out the spa pavilion. I'll be honest, I was surprised that everything was just open. It's a beautiful space and it really does feel like a destination unto itself, something that I think many similar resorts fail to do. There is of course also a separate fitness center, and if you look at the resort map that I showed you earlier, there's also a designated jogging track around part of the resort. Okay, breakfast time at Makase. For dinner, Makase serves a Japanese a la carte menu, which you can see here. Overall, the breakfast was good. I am a fan of these separate breakfast rooms that newer hotels are building to house their buffets. My only critique is that there's just, again, so much stuff. There's a good assortment of food. I'm not saying it's all smoke and mirrors. But guys, 10% less decoration would be fantastic. As for service here in general, I think it was exactly as I expected for a mid-tier lifestyle resort. It was polite, friendly, and efficient, but not much more but I don't think it needed to be more. There was also an a la carte supplemental menu. Only issue with this was that the dishes took a solid 30 minutes to come out, and this is when they first opened, and it wasn't busy at all. Okay, so overall, it's a very nice resort. Did it blow me away? No. Did it disappoint me? No. If ever there was a resort that was firmly a mid-80s for me, this one really is it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you're looking for a resort that is reasonably priced, in the center of Seminyak, that is perhaps best as a recovery pad or a home base, then this could be a great option for you. If you're looking for a place to completely zen out, or a resort that will keep your family entertained for days, there are likely better options out there. Which surprise surprise you can take a look at in my Bali playlist linked above. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming Bali content. While I do still have three more resorts coming out, I'll see you next time for my video on Garuda Indonesia from Denpasar to Jakarta. Oh, and thanks for watching to the end.